in the chicken and egg scenario, the content necessarily has to come first. Uh, also, you know, even if you don't market the content, depending on how well your SEO strategy is or like how strong your SEO strategy is, you can easily still dominate the search engine results pages, even if you don't do any content marketing, quite frankly. It really depends on how competitive the industry is and how competitive the keywords are that you're targeting. Okay. That's like, I would say that that's true in about 20% of the cases though. The rest of the 80% could really use some help of content marketing. I am Nishan Garg with What Market Wants. My guest for today specializes in content marketing. She's the CEO of The Content Factory. She is a podcaster. She's among the top 10 content marketers in the world. Let's welcome Carrie De Phillips. Hi. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. So Carrie, could you walk us through your content marketing journey? I believe you started 11 years ago. I actually got started a little sooner than that. Um, I started my company 11 years ago, The Content Factory, but I initially got into content marketing via content writing. Uh, I had a job in advertising that I didn't love. Uh, I wanted the flexibility to be able to work remotely from home or from anywhere in the world. And uh, so I became a freelance writer. And as you create content for clients, often they're, they want to know how you can amplify that content and have it reach the greatest audience possible. In many cases, or at least in my case, uh, that tends to be via SEO, search engine optimization. I was ranked number two in the world, the number two lady in the world, at least, <laughs> uh-huh. in search engine optimization by SERPstat last year. And uh so I'm good at that. But in order to be good at SEO, you again, there's a huge content marketing side of things because you need those backlinks in order for the content to rank. Uh, social shares don't really do much for um, uh, SEO signals, but certainly when it comes to promoting your content and getting in front of the right audience, it's absolutely essential. Uh, and, and so we kind of roll all of those uh, tactics and techniques into what we do for our clients and ourselves over at the content factory. So tell me, how would you explain the concept of content marketing to a novice marketer? It's about how do you get the content that you create, whether that's a video or a blog post, or in this case, a podcast, uh, and how do you put that content in front of the most, not just the most eyes, but the most relevant eyes possible. So how do you effectively hit your target audience with your content? Well, you have to market your content. How do you do that? Uh, is influential partnerships, uh, partnerships with other complementary non-computing brands uh, can go a long ways. PR can go a long way. Uh, certainly when you're featured in Fast Company or Entrepreneur, uh, I've been in both. It, business comes your way. Uh, you get to have that as featured in credibility on your website that will help increase conversions. Um, so, yeah. So, tell me, there's so much unnoticed content out there. What do you think companies are doing wrong? They're not marketing their content effectively or consistently. Uh, one thing that we really like to focus on at the content factory is creating evergreen content, which means that, you know, unless there are shifts in the industry, in which case we would go and update the blog post, but we design our content and our clients content to be as evergreen as possible, which means that if you're just promoting that content, the first week it comes out instead of continually re-promoting that content, because again, it's evergreen, it's always good. Uh, you're really missing out on enabling your content to grow legs and run around the internet. Uh, content uh, marketing is, it's not a one and done thing. Just because you tweeted out this blog post and you put it on Facebook and LinkedIn does not mean that you're out of the woods. You should be doing that consistently. And as you build up your library of content, uh, you can schedule those posts to go live and continually re-promote your content at least, you know, once a month, once every two weeks. So what are the most common misconceptions about content marketing, according to you? That if you tweet out an article, you're done. <laughs> Again, it's, <laughs> you, you have to be more consistent than that. And there is, there's a lot of sweat that you got to put into promoting the content, but... Uh, 
once you've written the content, I'd say that your job is about 30% done. So you still have 70% of marketing to do and on an ongoing basis. So is content king or content marketing? What comes first according to you? Well, you can't have content marketing without the content, you know? You yeah. have to have something to market. Uh, so in that way, I would see, say that in the chicken and egg scenario, the content necessarily has to come first. Uh, also, you know, even if you don't market the content, depending on how well your SEO strategy is or like how strong your SEO strategy is, you can easily still dominate the search engine results pages, even if you don't do any content marketing, quite frankly. It really depends on how competitive the industry is and how competitive the keywords are that you're targeting. But I can tell you it's entirely possible to have a blog post that ranks number one for a variety of search terms that you want, you know, that your target audience is looking for without having to, you know, consistently promote it. Okay. That's like, I would say that that's true in about 20% of the cases, though. The rest of the 80% could really use some help of content marketing. So tell me. What does it take to create a successful content marketing strategy? Could you break that down for us? Sure. So you have to know who you're targeting and you have to understand like what their needs are, what questions they have so that you can get out ahead of that with your content, you know, create a complete guide to X, Y, Z or, you know, a pricing, uh, Pricing tends to work well because if somebody's searching for the cost of something, cost of X, it's because they're in the research phase before making a purchase. So those people are really likely to convert. Uh, so understanding your your target audience's problems and then solving those problems or answering those questions with content building out your strategy of content based off of that, and then uh, maybe incorporating quotes from experts or thought leaders in the space into your content so that when you do tweet it, you get to tag those experts that you quoted in your content. They'll always be great for a retweet or a like. And again, if the content is evergreen, you're continually, you know, once a month or so, promoting that content, tagging the people who you quoted and building those relationships because who doesn't like to be tagged in a tweet when it's something that makes them look good, right? So it, content marketing is a lot about relationship building if you're doing it right. Because if you can build relationships with thought leaders in your industry and then feature their expertise in your content, number one, you're going to sound like more of an authority. And number two, you're going to look more connected because you are. And then number three, you're going to have those people consistently helping you to promote your content and reaching their audience as well. So it's just a win, win, win all around, but you have to bake that into your content. Otherwise, if you're not quoting experts, you don't really have anyone to tag. And then it's more like screaming out into the ether. Uh, so, there's nothing sadder than a tweet that gets no more, no engagement, you know? So could you give us names of brands that you think are doing it well? Sure. Um, I have a client, Fortified Ballistic Security. If you need a panic room in your house, if you need bulletproof windows, if you want a door that like a, a truck can't drive through, <laughs> okay. uh, he's your guy. Uh, during the pandemic or prior to the pandemic, let me say, start there. This guy made all of his sales uh, essentially kind of going door to door to different architects and um, home builders, luxury home builders. And uh, he started working with us. We it was one of those cases where we we were able to get him to rank really high for his targeted uh, search terms, like right away. Within six months, uh, he didn't have to go out on the road anymore because all of the leads were coming to him. As the pandemic hit, if he hadn't invested in SEO, uh, his business would have gone under. He said because there was no way for him to make sales the way that he had always made sales. And great news, he didn't have to because all of it was coming to him. We helped build out that strategy, though, and it involved uh, quoting lots of experts um, and really targeting, really understanding the, the problems that his target audience faced so that we can talk about how his products solve those problems. Um, like this guy will create a panic room in your yacht which is pretty cool. And then I was like, well, why would you need a panic room in a yacht? And he was like, pirates, Carrie, of course. <laughs> and I guess pirates are a real thing in the yacht world. And I just, 
I'm not to that point in my career yet where I'm like yacht ready. But once I do, <laughs> now I know I need a panic room in there. But because he was able to rank so high or we were able to get his content to rank so high, uh, media outlets started finding him. And then next thing you know, he's got several large media hits. Uh, he's got one coming out for the Rob Report um, next week, I think. But uh, where did we get him? We got him like MSN, MSNBC. Um, that one got syndicated a lot. And so that actually drove business his way too. And the way that these journalists found him for interview was through the blog content that we had created. So again, the, the strategy about creating content uh, and, and baking content marketing into your content so that even if you're kind of lazy on the social shares one month, it'll still do some heavy lifting for you is uh, a key component to an effective strategy. I love the name Panic Room. <laughs> That's a very good name. <laughs> so, and he's so, ranking number, he's ranking on the first page for Panic Room. And there's a movie called Panic Room, which is like, that alone tells you how difficult it can be, but oh, wow. like, it's possible. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so, so tell me, what, what about brands that you think are not doing it well? You know, I can't name any because like, and, unless they're really messing up some sort of uh, marketing campaign, we, I can't name any brands that aren't doing it well because I don't know what those brands are. They're not marketing to me well enough for me to name them. <laughs> <laughs> I love your response. <laughs> so, so tell me, what tools do you recommend to other content marketers? What tools should they use? Well, you should be fluent in Google Analytics. That's for sure. Because you should absolutely be tracking all of your website traffic, understanding um, which referral or like which refers whether that's organic search or, you know, a social media channel or whatnot, uh, resonates the best via time on site so that, you know, like, all right, uh, people who come in through Facebook tend to stay a little longer. Maybe that is a more effective channel for me than say LinkedIn, where we get, um, maybe two hits a month and they just bounce right off the site. So looking for trends, uh, in Google analytics is really important, but in order to like look for them, you have to be able to identify them. So being being an expert or at least being fluent in the the types of data trackers that you you need to monitor uh, is important. I love SEMrush as a tool. Uh, that's a fantastic SEO tool. Buzzsumo is good for PR and uh, finding influencers to partner with. Uh, nothing really beats a good old fashioned Google search uh, in that regard. Um, certainly you need a social media scheduler, uh, people, there are several different ones that you can choose from Hootsuite, Buffer, Later, uh, pick your poison. They all kind of do the same thing. It's just about like, what interface do you, do you like? And you know, which one's the cheapest. So are there any tools that you recommend for content creation? You know, AI is really creeping into, into the space and I've tried it. I've tried Jarvis. I've tried like all of the ones that are out right now. And for long form blog content, it's like, I, I have been less than impressed. It would actually take me more time to edit the content that the robot spit out than to just create it from scratch myself. Um, okay. So I would just recommend avoiding that, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So who do you look up to in your industry? Uh, Cindy Gallup is like an icon. Cindy Gallup is just a, a brilliant mind in advertising. Uh, she also created Make Love Not Porn, which is, you know, revolutionizing the industry. I read an article in Ad Age magazine, and it was a full feature on Cindy Gallup. And it said, Cindy Gallup doesn't give an F what you think. And I was like, well, I need to read more. And so I did. And this lady is so cool that Puff Daddy, Usher, and Nelly recorded their nasty gal video in her old apartment. Oh. They could have had any location and they chose Cindy Gallup's. So if that's not badass, I don't know what is. But what, what really like lights my heart on fire for Cindy Gallup is she is so supportive of other women. She's extremely supportive of minorities in this space. Uh, and she's a champion for others. I was fortunate enough to, um, I reached out to her after I read that Ad Age article. And uh, we connected on LinkedIn. And within like three months, 
she became a client of the content factories, which was like a, a huge Ooh, wow. win for me. It's like you contact your idol and then all of a sudden your idol is hiring you to manage their SEO. And I was like, well, that's incredible. And she's referred a lot of business to me uh, since we started working together. And that's not the reason why I love her, although certainly, you know, <laughs> I, I do love that. But just the way that she is a champion for others and she constantly, you know, is reaching down to newer people in the industry and, you know, helping to mentor them. It's uh, it's been really powerful for me as somebody who got to experience her generosity. But I can see that I am by no means the only one that she's doing this for. She's just she's out there promoting all kinds of people who deserve to be promoted in addition to herself. And she does it so elegantly and eloquently that uh, she has hero status in my book forever. Okay. Wow. So tell me, what's the secret behind going viral on the internet? <sighs> there is no secret to going viral. If there were a secret to going viral, you know, I, I just had a meeting with, uh, we, we have a press release that we're sending for a client and, uh, they were like, oh, you know, so what's the likelihood of going viral? And we're just like, how do we know? <laughs> if there was a recipe, if there was a recipe for going viral on LinkedIn or, you know, anywhere else, uh, we would have written written it down and I'd be selling it to you. There is a recipe for success um, with regard to SEO. And we've got an online course that will teach you the ins and outs of that. It's called Rise and Convert. Um, but you just have to throw a lot of stuff at the wall and see what sticks. And it, it's like, it's about iteration too. So if you see that, if you've got a good feeling that something's kind of working out in the right way, you can tweak your campaign, tweak, you know, who you're, ta who you're tagging or who you're, what you're hashtagging and, uh, you know, optimize your results through again, iteration and improvement. But you, you have to keep a close eye on the data and analytics in order to, you know, effectively make those changes or even know what changes should be made. So what are your favorite content marketing campaigns? Anything that you consider as iconic in your view? Sure. Uh, the, the ice bucket challenge is pretty sick. Uh, I have a friend who's gotten me into a bit of biohacking. And I can tell you that sitting in an ice bath for six minutes is it's it's not fun, but it's something that I do on a kind of regular basis for health reasons and also just like the mental challenge of it all. But it, so to get somebody to dump ice, a bucket of ice water over their head, it's, you know, it's kind of fun, but it's also very uncomfortable. And wow, they raised so much money for that charity through the ice bucket challenge. Everyone was doing it. My Facebook feed was flooded. All of our uh, nonprofit clients were like, well, what's the next ice bucket challenge and how can you create that for us? And again, it's like, there's no recipe for going viral. We can <laughs> take our best shot at it and maybe come up with a couple of different options and, and see what sticks. But uh, that's my favorite so far. And I, I think the reason why it's my favorite is because it put people in an uncomfortable position. They did it anyway. And then it raised a lot of money for charity. Wow. Brilliant. So tell me. What are your favorite branding and marketing books? I'm trying to think. It's been a while. I've been really into the management stuff lately. The Power of Habit is a fantastic book. Whether you're talking about content marketing or just running your life, uh, The Power of Habit is fantastic. Um, mm. Purple Cow is a good one. Okay. Um, I guess I'll leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, Carrie, thanks a lot for your time and insights. I really appreciate this. Thanks for having me. If you find this interesting, you must check out our course. You'll find a link in the description. To get more such great insights from the world of business, branding and marketing, subscribe to What Market Wants, share this with someone you want to help and let me help you unlock your market potential. Cheers. <laughs>